coming up is from uh, Vishal Mehta from Hazura and actually going to be addressing sort of this uh, topic as well of, of uh, data cat, uh, dictionaries, which is going to be sort of an interesting angle on this whole piece. I'll let her explain all the pieces. Uh, so Vishwa, um, you can come to the stage. Hello. Hi, Vish. Hi, how are you? Yeah, doing good. I'm going to let you go right at it since uh, we're already a little bit behind. So, okay, sure. All yours. Perfect. I'm ready. Just a second. Did you share your screen? Um, Should be near the bottom there. Yep. I just want to be sharing a single window. And I just want to make sure that um, when I switch a window, it doesn't change the view for the audience. Do you know yeah. what the option would be? So you're trying to swap your your video with your with your slides. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure the best way to do that. <laughs> um, Oh, um, can try sharing, yeah. we, can, we can do this. Um, I can try sharing and you can let me know if when I switch my window, you can let me know if it's switching your view. <laughs> Does right. that work? That works. Okay, sure. Here it goes. Um, is it switching the view for you? We see your desktop. You... Just let me know if it's you're see, still seeing Hopin. Yeah, we're seeing Hopin right now. Yeah. And what about now? Uh, it's also still seeing Hop, a Hopin browser. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Yeah, that works then. I'm so sorry all about right. where no it go. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and leave and let you have it. Thank you so much. Oh, it's actually not. Um, oh, well, just give me one minute, folks. This is unfortunate. You see how you do the test right before the conference, and then it still goes down right before your talk. <laughs> So oh, please bear with me while I switch my view and sure it is. All right. This should be good. <clears throat> Okay, <laughs> really sorry about that, folks. Um, that was kind of embarrassing, but hey, I am Vish. How are you all? I'm super excited to be speaking at API Days Paris today. I'm Vish, Vishwa Mehta actually, but Vish for short. I'm a web developer turned technical writer, a speaker, and an aspiring developer advocate. I am currently working on the DevRel team at Hasura. I have started tinkering with um, GraphQL in 2018, I guess. And ever since it has been a surreal experience working with it and watching it mature both as a spec and as a community. And um, I'm extremely passionate about teaching GraphQL to beginners. Um, when I'm not working on the cool community content and DevRel stuff, I'm found in my natural habitat usually um, that you might get a peek of in my background, <laughs> reading and listening to the world's best. But I also have my heart for poetry and write a little bit of that myself. But that's something that you and I need to keep a secret. <laughs> so that's mostly about me. Um, now, before we dive right into the talk, I kind of want to talk about Hasura a little bit here. Since I'm from Hasura, it just makes sense to talk about it. Um, so what Hasura does and what it gives you is that um, Hasura gives you instant GraphQL APIs for your new and existing database and services 
to power modern apps and data integrations. Um, well, what that means in a simpler language is that it helps you connect to your data sources and get uh, and gives you instant GraphQL APIs over your data to use in um, to, to build modern apps and data integrations. And the APIs it gives are um, production ready and real time APIs. So it's a really robust experience for a developer. Um, another really cool thing that I wanted to talk about here, which makes the Hasura experience really powerful, is that Hasura comes with its own authorization engine. Um, and the authorization engine helps you um, build a robust role-based access control system, um, means your permissioning system, um, and in a declarative way which means that you can configure your permissions, um, you can create roles declaratively using the Hasura console. Hasura console is basically the UI um, that helps you manipulate um, and manage your data, basically um, perform all the CRUD operations that your GraphQL API gives you out of the box with Hasura. And lastly, I'd like to talk about Federation. Now, Federation with Hasura um, helps you bring in multiple data sources and join the data um, that these data sources bring to give a single combined response back to the client. And what this means is that if you have a CMS, if you have a Postgres database, and you're bringing both of these data sources inside your Hasura app, Hasura uh, Data Federation with Hasura is going to let you um, join uh, the data coming from these using remote joins um, and give the response back in a single query, in a single response back to the client. And that's mostly um, what I wanted to talk about Hasura before moving on to the actual topic of my talk today, which is Hasura Data Dictionary. So what is Hasura Data Dictionary? Um, well, it's an open source project that helps you understand your data graph which includes your database relationships and GraphQL schemas. Well, you'll say that it's literally on the slide, right? So what's more to it? What's more to it is that Hazard Data Dictionary is also a set of components that help you build your own data dictionary. It helps you build your own um, information portal, right? And why this is necessary, why this is useful is that while we were thinking about it, while the team, team was building it, um, our goal was that um, we wanted to make it easy for anybody who consumes a Hasura powered API to be able to explore the models and the methods available to them, to be able to explore any queries, any subscriptions, any um, um, you know, uh, mutations that are available to them, but not just that. Um, it gives you a top level view. And I'll talk about that and the difference between both those things in a little bit. Um, we were kind of taking a modular approach here, um, kind of approaching this problem in a model first view rather than a method first view. Um, and the reason why a model first view rather than a method first view becomes more important here when we talk about data dictionary is because it becomes very tedious to look at an entire API in one shot if you have a huge organ if you're a huge organization, if you have hundreds and thousands of tables, um, a huge number of existing models, it just just becomes a bit intense at, in one shot, right? Um, you need to onboard yourself in that case, you, know, you need to onboard yourself onto it more gradually. For this, we need um, a less intense and more condensed model to navigate this landscape. And that is exactly what Data Dictionary helps with. It gives a model first view into your schema rather than a method first view. There could be thousands of operations and methods available to you, but what it will first show you is how many models are there inside your schema and everything that you might want to first explore when you are onboarded into a particular application or a, um, a data database. Um, now that we know a little bit about data dictionary, is uh, I'd like to talk about why we actually created data dictionary. And there were three main reasons why we created a data dictionary. The first one is exploration. Second is building complex queries. And the third is community. Now, 
talking about exploration a bit, it's more about what I um, discussed in the previous slide. We wanted to help developers and mostly teams. Um, we wanted to help them quickly reference and understand what they're working with, right? The kind of data, the tables and the relationships of the databases they're working with. Um, and the generated schemas in their Hasura projects. We wanted to give them this freedom of exploring on their own, um, just like how you explore using a GraphQL API, um, the introspection part, right? And now, if you're asking the question, why isn't the GraphQL API introspection result enough, if that's the case? Um, my answer to that would be, I mean, this is a kind of, a trick question it's a good question but it's a trick question because it is enough but sometimes it could be more than enough it could be more than what is required and what you might you might not necessarily want to explore so many methods um, and um, operations um, before getting into all of it um, you might want to you know get to understand the top level structure of the models and that's what um, the data dictionary sets it apart for you from the regular GraphQL API introspection. Um, coming back to um, how we wanted to help developers and teams quickly explore um, this um, model view, model first view. Um, so that's the first thing that that was our major reason why we wanted to do this. Um, and the second one was, um, you know, uh, making it easier for them to build complex queries um, rapidly and easily. Um, so this is where the graphical tab comes in. It kind of makes it easy to experiment and create complex queries um, rather than writing it by hand, right? Because that's kind of difficult to do. Um, and I'll quickly give an example of that later on in the demo that we'll be seeing. Um, so, so that was the second reason we wanted to create a tool that also has the graphical experience integrated with it um, that lets um, developers um, build complex queries and get the results um, easily. Uh, so that, that was the second. And then the third um, reason was community. Um, that's always a big factor when we're thinking about building tools, open source tools and um, solutions for our developers, for our users, right? So we wanted to build something that is useful and ex accelerates um, the development process for a lot of people, for a lot of companies and a, a, a lot of teams if they want to build um, things like a developer portal or admin dashboards or um, information CMSs and stuff like that for exploration purposes, for documentation purposes, um, um, for use for internal purposes. And so we wanted to create something that helps accelerate this development process. So data dictionary serves as the base, as the foundation of um, the, that kind of a project if you want to build it for your team, for your company, for a huge organization where, um, you know, when you're thrown into that abyss of when you're new and you're thrown into that abyss of data and information, we wanted to give you a tool which is easy for you um, to make all of that exploration and understanding the, the models um, easier for you. So that was basically um, the third reason that we had in creating Data Dictionary. And um, now kind of I wanted to talk about um, the anatomy of data dictionary. And when I say anatomy, I don't mean how it was built. That's not what I wanted to talk about here. But, um, you know, I wanted to talk about, I, I kind of wanted to go into what makes up Hasura data dictionary. And um, there are two main pieces, two main building blocks of data dictionary. The first is, as you can see, um, the first is the API. And um, this is a GraphQL API that serves the Hasura metadata and um, the Hasura data source information where, a, uh, you know, I, in the demo, you'll see that every description has um, this data source information. So it serves the Hasura metadata as well as the Hasura data source information. Where is the data coming from? And the cool thing about this is that Hasura already gives you these APIs, but it's not available to you as GraphQL APIs. And this is a GraphQL API that is 
not a part of Hasura, but you can now add it as a remote schema. That's that's another really cool thing that you can add it at, as a remote schema. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about and mention here is about the API. About this API is that you can you can um, pass a role to it um, to access the the perfect subset, the right subset of information that works for you that you want to explore from your schema um, based on that role. So that's something that's also really cool about the, this API. Um, and you can also add in another data source since this is um, a, a GraphQL endpoint that you can add as a remote schema to your Hasura app. You can also add in another data source. Um, for instance, if you have a MySQL database um, or a contentful CMS as a remote schema and you want to join in um, the data that you're getting from the CMS um, with um, the data that is coming from your database, your MySQL database, and um, you want to join that information to make a documentation that is a better documentation experience, which is more structured. Maybe it has images, it has more comments. Um, this is the freedom that, and the flexibility that you get above the usual GraphQL API documentation, the, the um, schema documentation that you can see only the single line text. This is the flexibility that you get with data dictionary that you have a more enhanced um, documentation experience if you want to go for it. And um, all of that data can be managed separately, yet combined into a single response to give back to your front end, um, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, that's the first um, building block, the main building block of the data dictionary. And the second one is that um, it is a set of React components that use the API um, we talked about um, and provide a visualization of the data that's, that, that is coming from the API. So this is like a, a UI layer for your backend API. It con consumes the data from the API and gives you a pretty neat yet condensed look into it. It will be, um, you know, uh, we, we will be looking at this in a bit um, um, in, during the demo. Um, but yeah, so these are the two um, building blocks of data dictionary. Um, and yeah, demo time. <laughs> so for the demo, I actually had, um, I've already set up the data dictionary and it is running here to save some time. Um, but I'll be showing the process of how you can set it up. Oh, it's loading again. Cool. Um, but I, I'll show you the process of how you can set it up on your local machine or your hosted Hasura project if you have one using cloud. Um, and yeah, so this is basically what you see. Um, the screen that you're seeing right now is the React component and we have used Next.js to build this. Um, and as you can see, we have data models from the database and data models in GQL. This is basically, if you go to data models DB, here is, it, it is gonna give you all the models um, that is coming from these models, these tables are coming from Postgres. So there is the model name, then there is the description of the model. It's gonna tell you what the model is. <clears throat> so it's actually a table. And if you look at source, which I was talking about earlier, the source is Postgres. So this tells you that it's this model is coming from a Postgres database that you have inside Hasura. If it was a remote schema, um, then it was gonna then this source would mention that remote schema, right? Um, so this is this is pretty nifty. It's it's that model first view that you can see instead of method first view, right? You can slowly and gradually onboard yourself onto the schema and understand um, uh, what makes up your schema. <clears throat> and if you go to the data models um, GQL tab here, it's gonna tell you um, about. It's gonna give you a list of um, <clears throat> operations and methods and the type of the operation, operation name, the description, and then you can try it out using this button right here. So we have a bunch of queries that we have available over the models that we saw earlier, um, a bunch of mutations. There are a bunch of subscriptions towards the end. And yeah, there's also, I forgot to mention, there's also this search functionality, which is pretty nifty. 
Um, so you can just search for any operations right from here. Um, and you could have thousands and thousands of um, these operations and these methods, and you can search it right uh, from there, from the search um, field. Um, and quickly looking at the data graph, um, yeah. So the data graph is actually a macro look into, so this is kind of like an ERD. This is basically an ERD. And the data graph gives you a macro view into, the, into all of the relationships between uh, these models. Um, so as you can see, invoices and invoice lines, they're related to each other and stuff like that. And quickly going to the graphical tab. The graphical tab is what um, I earlier talked about. Might take a second. Yeah. So this is the graphical um, tab. Um, if you've used a graphic, uh, GraphQL API before, um, uh, the graphical playground basically looks like this. There's a playground. You can pass your query variables here. There, you can check out the documentation from this tab. Um, here is where you get your response. And this is your explorer and query builder, actually. So um, let's check out a, a, a quick query um, as an example of a co complex query that you can build out. Um, and maybe we can pick something from here. Um, let's say we want to try out the model actors, try it out. So what we want to do here as an example is that we want to aggregate all the invoices um, and perform a sum on the total of all of those invoices <clears throat> for a particular customer, let's say of ID 10, right? So select invoice aggregate um, and then aggregate. And then actually where condition here, where um, ID equals 10, that's right, that's good. Um, aggregate we've already selected and then we want to perform a sum on the total. And when you press play, it is gonna display the sum of the total for the ID um, that equals 10. And that's a really good example of um, not that complex, but still a complex query that you can build out just by selecting these fields, right? Um, so going back, um, this is mostly what I wanted to talk about, Hasura Data Dictionary. There's a lot to it, and we've just released it. We're open to contributions from the community, and we're open to improving it um, with the help of the community. And we'd love to make it into a version where it can serve as the basis um, of all of your cool projects and things that you might want to build for your as your solutions. So try it out yourself. Um, you can download the code in our GitHub repo, which is right here. So this is completely open source. We have a beautiful repo that has been maintained by Gavin from Hasura. Um, and it has um, it is pretty well documented. Now, and it has set up instructions that you can go through. Um, just one or two simple steps that you can um, um, you can carry out and um, it will help you set it up yourself. And it also includes, yeah, a, a set up instructions and a Docker Compose file to quickly get started with it. And um, before I end, if you're not on Hasura Cloud yet, get a free account and follow our tutorial to create a GraphQL endpoint in minutes. And all of the links are in these slides and I'll be sharing the slides um, later with all of you. So thank you so much uh, for being such a lovely audience and being patient with the thing that happened earlier in the beginning. Um, you can find me at Vishwa Mehta Suri on Twitter and um, come say hi. I'd love to have a chat about GraphQL communities, art, poetry, anything that's interesting to you, anything that's um, actually an interesting thing to talk about. I'd love to have that chat with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vish. That was a great chat. And the whole topic about annotating the, uh, the APIs is really um, a missing point in a lot of developer experience, one mm -hmm. that a lot of the REST tooling has got kind of a leg up on in the GraphQL space. And it's great to see companies like uh, Hazura bringing that to the actual GraphQL space. I'm going to have to allocate the q and I think, to the chat. <laughs> so if you want to hang around and chat for a little bit, people can ask you a few questions. 
uh, since we're just a, a few minutes behind schedule, and I'm going to just hop right along to Ashley. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you have any questions, please uh, ping uh, ping Vish in the chat, and she'd be happy to answer them for for a little bit. So sure. thank you again so much. Uh -huh.